All right, let's do an example out of the Philpod book. So this is number 131 for that one. Um, okay, so this is the bell crank is shown in this picture. It's in equilibrium for the forces acting in rods one and two. We have a bell crank that's supported by a 10 millimeter diameter pin at B that acts in single shear. Okay, so here is B, 10 millimeter diameter, that's important. Single shear is important. Uh, the thickness of the bell crank is five millimeters. We want that, so let's put T is five millimeters. We're gonna assume A is 65 millimeters, B is 150. All right, and then F1, this is gonna be 1100 newtons at 50 degrees. Now, we wanna find the following. So we want to find the average shear stress um, in pin B, and then we want to find the average bearing stress here at B. All right, so that's what we are looking for. Okay, so first of all, let's look at all the things we were given. I have this four, so you have these distances. It didn't tell me about F2 though. We kind of need to know about that, right? So let's go ahead and let's find F2 first. So to do that, it's just like a basic statics equilibrium problem. So we need to draw the free body diagram of the bell crank. And, okay, that's a terrible drawing, but y'all know what I'm trying to draw. Okay, so we've got F2 right here. And then we've got F1 here, which is 1100 Newtons. Now this is at an angle of 50. And then we've got this pin at B. So what forces do we have due to a pin? We've got X and Y, right? So I'm just gonna say they're positive. So X there and then BY there. Now again, I don't know if that's the correct direction or not. We'll find out sooner or later uh, when we do our equations. Okay, so we've got that. And now we know our distances also, right? This is 65 millimeters and then this distance here is 150 millimeters okay perfect so now we can go ahead and do our equations we've got three unknowns three equations i'm going to go ahead and start with a moment at b so that i can find f2 counterclockwise is going to be positive and notice that a and b are on the same line here all right, so it's going to be important when we do this moment. Since these are on the same line, that means the X component of this force goes through B, so it doesn't create a moment. The vertical component does create a moment. All right, so the vertical component is going to be 1100 sine 50. And if counterclockwise is positive, if this is pointing up, it's going to go clockwise, right? So that's negative. And then the distance is going to be this 65. Now that's millimeters. Okay, so we've got that. And then F2, that creates a moment also. Now this one is going to be clockwise, right? So that's positive. Let's put it down here. So we're going to have F2 times the distance. Run right here, 150. It's perpendicular. And then that's it, because B, Y, B, X, those go through point B, so they don't create a moment. So now we can find F2. And let's see what that value is. Okay, so that's gonna be a positive 365.15, and that'll be Newtons. So that looks good there. Now we can go ahead and find B, X, B, Y. Uh, I'll do the X equation first, I guess. All right, so this one has an X equation. It's going to be negative, though. It's pointing left, right? So we're going to have negative 1100 cosine 50 plus BX plus F2. We already know what F2 is, though, so let's plug in that value. Set it to zero. BX is our unknown. So what does that give us? Okay, so this one is going to give us a positive 341.92, and that's Newtons. All right, so positive means that was the correct direction. 
Now let's do y. Ups positive. We got a vertical component here. 1100 sine 50 is going up, so it's positive. Let's put that. We got a positive by. And then that's all we got. So set it equal to 0. So now we can find by. Now by is going to be negative, right? When I move this over, now what's the value? Um, 842.65. And that's Newton's. So the negative here just means it should be drawn going down. OK. So now we've got that. Now, let's see what else we need. So what we're mainly told to look for, first of all, is to find the average shear stress in pin B. Now, I've got Vx, Vy. Well, we know the shear stress equation um, is basically the shear force over A, right? So we know we've got that. So we need a magnitude. OK, so I need to take the magnitude of Vx and Vy. So let's do that. OK, so since we're squaring by, that negative there is not going to matter. Um, so we got square root of 341.92 squared plus the negative 842.65. Square that. And let's see what we get. So that magnitude is 909.38, and that's Newton's. OK, so this is what we're going to use in our shear equation for V. All right, and if you're wondering why that is, if we look at B, like the pin, let's just kind of draw it a diagram here of the pin. It's in single shear, so it only has one shear force. Now, if I look at my direction um, for B, we have a positive X and negative Y. So that means our magnitude's kind of like that. And then if we're going to have a shear, it's going to be in the opposite direction here. So there's only the two, so V's got to equal the value of B. Okay, So that's what we're going to plug in to our shear equation. All right, so let's, let's look here. So average shear stress at B is going to be the 909.38 Newtons. And then we need an area. What area should we use? Well, it's going to be the area that has the shear on it, right? Well, if I'm to, you know, section this pin, notice we've got a circular cross section. We were told the diameter, right? It was 10 millimeters. So this here is 10 millimeters. So our area then would be um, basically pi over 4 times 10 millimeters square that. All right, so then let's see what that gives us. So that value is going to be 11.58. Notice this is Newtons per millimeter squared, right? So that is going to end up being megapascal. All right, you could convert this over to meters if you wanted. It'd be 0 0.01. Um, and then you'd get a big number and then convert over to megapascal using the 10 to the 6th conversion. OK, so this is going to be our shear stress at B, OK? 11.58 megapascal. So now we want to find the average bearing stress in the bell crank at B. All right, so remember you get bearing stress when you have two surfaces that are applying compression forces against each other. Now, when we do bearing stress, it's the same general equation all right, it's a normal type stress, right? So instead of the little tau, we're going to have a sigma because sigma represents a normal stress. All right, and we're going to have our force, right, which is still the 909.38, but you've got the bearing area, the bearing stress area. So it's not this same area because this was the area of the cross section of the pin, right? This is a different area. So what you want to look for when you're doing the bearing stress is you want to look at the projected area. That's what the book calls it. So the projected area that is created um, when the two surfaces are 
basically in contact. So if you look here, we're told those are in contact and the thickness of the bell crank is five millimeters. So if you were to rotate this on its side and look you know, at the side, this is five millimeters. Okay, so that's gonna be important. Now this is circular. So if you were to look at the projected area, what it's gonna be is the diameter of the pin times the thickness of the bell crank. And that's pretty much the equation when you're looking at bearing stress caused by a pin. It's gonna be diameter of the pin times the thickness of the, the body you're looking at. All right, so if we do that, we're gonna have 909.38. Diameter, we were told, is 10 millimeters. All right, so we got 10 millimeters, and then thickness is five millimeters. Okay, so let's calculate that. Okay, so that one, notice that's Newton's there. That's gonna give me 18.18. And again, notice this is Newton's per millimeter squared, so that's gonna be in megapascal. Okay, so remember, for a pin, the bearing area would be the diameter times T, which is the thickness. Okay, I'm not very good at drawing these things, but let's see. Um, so let's just do some example here. Okay, like I said, y'all, I'm not good at drawing at all. Okay, so let's say this is where a pin, so a pin is housed in here, right? And then it's in contact over here with a surface. So what we'd want to do is there's basically going to be like a rectangle here that has the stress acting on it. All right, so that's that projected area. Okay, so notice the diameter would be this length here, and then this is the thickness. So you want the area of this little rectangle here. All right, it's hard for me to draw it. Um, if you look in the textbooks, you'll see a drawing of it, but but that's kind of what it looks like. So that's where we're getting D times T because it's just basically the area equation for a rectangle because that would be the projected area. All right. Okay, so that's where we're getting that. So just keep that in mind anytime you have a pin, you're doing bearing stress. All right, and then that is our final thing we were looking for. Okay, so hopefully that one made sense. You enjoyed that one. I will see you all for the next one.